the airport fire is still going on in here in South Orange County and we want to talk about fire safety, about the fire itself and a lot of other things. We want to welcome Captain Larry Kurtz from the Orange County Fire Authority to our program. Thanks, thanks. For, thanks for being here. Thanks for having me on board. So airport fire started on Monday, and um, we know the, the area is, it, why is it called the airport fire? It's called the airport fire because of the location where it starts. Mm -hmm. Next to the uh, Trevico Canyon, there is a small hobbyist airfield for uh, small remote controlled uh, aircraft. Uh, okay. They operate it, and it's a small runway. It's like an airport in miniature. It even has a small tower, and you know, some people lovingly call it uh, Holy Jim International Airport. <laughs> and that's where the fire started, so that's the name that stuck with the fire. And we know what caused it now. It was some worker crews moving boulders around out there? Yes, uh, there was a crew that was uh, moving large boulders in the area, and some of their heavy equipment unfortunately sparked uh, a mm -hmm. fire. Mm -hmm. it, it does happen from time to time. Sure. Um, the workers that were on scene did the best they could to contain the fire with the fire extinguishers and what they had on hand. Unfortunately, it wasn't enough. It expanded quickly to you know, mm -hmm. what uh, mm -hmm. we're all seeing today out there. Right. What were the conditions like out there? Was it, was it a little more breezy than uh, a lot of shrubbery? Well, what we have out in Orange County area is mostly uh, small uh, scrub oak mm -hmm. and, mm -hmm. uh, and medium-sized brush. Uh, what you have out there as far as weather, obviously we've had, we're in the middle of a large heat wave here mm -hmm. in Southern California. And uh, we did have some uh, breeze yesterday. Mm -hmm. uh, so they were reporting some breezes were gusting up to almost uh, 20, 25 miles per okay. hour. Plus you have the topography in the area. That's the biggest mm -hmm. driver of this fire. And when I say topography, it's the canyon walls. Mm -hmm. uh, and the slope of those things that just let the fire just Correct. climb like that? Fire moves almost 13 times faster uh, moving uphill than it does across level ground. Mm. Uh, so when fire begins uh, getting on a slope, it's going to increase its speed exponentially mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Uh, so it some, gets away from people. Seen some pictures overnight and during the day of some of the fire shots that were out there. Um, what were the crews doing out there? Why were they moving the boulders in the first place? Or what, was, what kind of work was going on? Do we know? Uh, they were doing some sort of landscaping operation. I, okay. uh, unfortunately, I can't speak to exactly okay. what they were doing with the mm -hmm. boulders, but you know, we do know that was uh, the cause. Okay. Um, so what are some of the other factors that we're looking at this time of year um, in terms of fire and fire risk in these canyons, in these areas? Well, obviously, Orange County isn't the only uh, place that's having these kinds right. of we fires. Right, three major ones going on. Yes, we do. Um, so this time of year, what we have is we have brush that is cured all summer. Mm -hmm. uh, and when I mean mm -hmm. cured, it's become tinder dry. Mm -hmm. uh, plus, you have the addition of the large heat, and you have the canyon walls. And what, fortunately, we haven't had too much of, if we haven't had the Santa Ana wind conditions, which right. really makes it a challenge for us. Mm -hmm. uh, but for now, uh, we're just dealing with these things to try and contain this fire, and we do have strategies to contain it. In the last two years, we've had above average rain, which I guess made a bumper crop of new growth out there to burn, right? Right. Every year that we have uh, weather events, whether you have a lot of rain or a little bit of rain, two things happen. Either you have a drought year, uh, where whatever is dry out there it just gets drier, mm -hmm. or if you have, like we've had this year, record amounts of rain, mm -hmm. uh, it, it's great for you know, keeping things uh, very moist, but it also creates a lot of new growth. Mm -hmm. And all that new growth eventually cures to the point where it becomes dry tinder mm -hmm. and creates the brush fires that we have today. Now, a lot of residents around there were concerned about evacuations the other day, and um, it was uh, kind of going a little bit wild. Nobody knew which way it was going, but now it looks like we're, we're, the, a lot of communities are going to be safe in terms of which way this fire is moving, right? Well, that is a something that is always in flux. Right, uh, right. What we are always concerned about, you know, obviously uh, life, property and, uh, life and property are the number one things that we hold in the highest regard. Uh, we also have to monitor the, the perimeter of the fire and control those things. Mm -hmm. So we have resources in those neighborhoods protecting those neighborhoods doing structured defense. Mm -hmm. But we also have crews out in the hills on the fire fronts actually trying to control the edge of the fire. Mm -hmm. So you actually have two different things that you have to uh, apply your resources to. Mm -hmm. And we only have limited resources at that. Right, right. Uh, we have a map of the actual kind of the, the footprint of the fire thus far. That's, of course, ever changing. Mm -hmm. But what does that map show? What does it tell us? And, and obviously, look at that terrain. It's, it, it is a rugged area. Right. This is a topographic map that we have uh, of the fire as of this morning. Um, the fire has grown, as you know, to at least 9,000 acres, and we're expecting it to grow even further. At this point, we have 0% containment on mm -hmm. the fire. A lot of people don't understand exactly what containment means. 
Uh, when we refer to containment, it means we have a physical fire break around the entire perimeter of the mm -hmm. fire. Eventually, we're going to have to go over every square inch of the perimeter of this fire to make sure that it's all out. We can't afford yeah. to let one ember get over it. So as you see from the map here, uh, what our strategies are, we're actually uh, trying to prevent the fire from expanding. Mm -hmm. And we have a combination of dozers that are actually creating fire breaks on top of some of the ridge tops okay. on some of these. So we're going to allow that fire to get to the top of some of those, uh, some of those mm -hmm. ridges. And at the top of those ridges, there are hiking trails that we expand with dozers and we deny it fuel. It's like yeah, a natural just, fire break. Just, it can't burn sand. Correct. <laughs> Uh, we also have aircraft that you've seen dropping mm -hmm. uh, the fire retardant. Mm -hmm. uh, now, this fire retardant doesn't extinguish the fire. It slows the fire down. It mm -hmm. buys our crew's time. Okay. And usually what we're going to do is we're going to have that at the top of the mountain, and we're going to have it on the leeward side of the mountain, the mountain that has the side of the mountain that has not burned yet. In case an ember jumps In over. In case it jumps kind of over, thing. we have what we call a slop over. We have crews up there to get after it. Mm -hmm. And so that's what we're doing for pretty much most of the northern half of the fire. What we are concerned with is the southern and the eastern uh, flanks of this fire uh, moving across. Uh, they, if it keeps going, it is, it is possible to encroach upon some neighborhoods. Mm -hmm. uh, mm -hmm. But again, what we have is contingency plans. Uh, when we fight these fires, we do a lot of things. We take a look at the past. We look at past fires that have happened in the area. Uh, you and I come and go, uh, buildings come and go, but topography of the land pretty much stays the same. Right. So what we do is we go back into our history books and we look at what fires were there before, what it did, how it acted, and mm -hmm. what we can do is we can predict where the fire is going to be so we have the right resources in the right places at the right time. Mm -hmm. So as these fires, if they do start to encroach on these neighborhoods, we're going to be able to flood these neighborhoods with additional resources, additional uh, manpower, additional fire engines to help protect those communities from mm -hmm. the fire. Mm -hmm. Now, one thing I know you guys happens is that you guys become your own little air traffic control center when these things happen, directing firefighting helicopters, the planes, and also news helicopters are trying to get their shots. So it, it becomes a, a kind of a scary place in the air around these things for a for chance for collisions, right? right. It, it's, uh, it can become a crowded place. One of the first things we do if we have a fire of this magnitude is we instill a, a, TF, a TFR called a temporary flight restriction. Mm -hmm. It restricts people from flying drones. It restricts people from having their own personal aircraft, they go around the fire. So the only things that are in the air are our aircraft in the area. Mm -hmm. We also have what's called an air attack supervisor. Mm -hmm. uh, what this person does, uh, they actually orbit the fire in an aircraft of their own, and they're communicating with all the aircraft, not just the firefighting ones, news helicopters mm -hmm. too. Mm -hmm. uh, so we have these patterns, uh, uh, circulating patterns of aircraft that are coming in, aircraft that are going out. Uh, so we don't have any mid-air uh, collisions yeah. or other uh, catastrophes Everybody like that. see on the right highway in the sky out there. That's right. Larry Kurtz from the Orange County Fire Authority, thank you so much for coming in, telling us a little about what's going on out there, and helping educate a little bit about what we do and not do when we're out there in the world. Thank you so much. <laughs> and for people that want to uh, get more information about the fire, uh, please check us out on the OCFA.org. Uh, if you are looking into uh, places where we might be doing evacuations from, mm -hmm. you can check on the Orange County Sheriff's website as well. They'll Perfect. have that information. Thank you so much, Larry. All right. You're watching this day. We'll be right back.